Hi, I'm Dwight Pecker today for my new shop. I'm building two doors like this one. My future workshop will have two doors. One garage door in the back for the access to the shed and two inch doors in the front. Today I'm going to show you how I made both front doors. The first thing I do is to go to the lumber yard and buy a nice lot of African mahogany. After selecting the boards I'll use, I move them to my workbench. It's here that I notice that my plan's measurements are incorrect. The boards are not 2 times 90 inches, so I change my plans and cut them in half. Then I surface one side on my new jointer. I can finally join the board wider than 6 inches. Now that the styles are flat on one side, I bring the rest of the wood I need to complete both doors and join one side. Since some boards have more than half an inch of bow in the center, I cut them straight with the circular saw. It's fast and does a good job. You can see the joint line between both styles here. Then I glue some boards together to make them wider. Before the glue sets completely, I scrape off the excess glue. Then I'll glue the longer boards for the styles. When the glue is dry, I cut them to it. Then the second side is plain straight. Next, one end of each tile is cut straight. Then I align them together, clamp them, mark their length, and cut the other end straight. I do the same thing for the rest of the pieces. Now that I have all the pieces cut to length, I mark their location on both doors. It's time to make all the dominoes mortises on the styles, the top rail and the top million. Then I dry assemble the top part of the door. With everything clamped together, I place and mark center lines for the center rail. Using these marks, I make all their mortises. Then I mark the length of the bottom mullion and cut it. After checking that it fits well, I mark the center and make the dominoes mortises. Then I measure the raised panel and cut them. But when I try to plane the second face, I realize that the panel is 13 and a quarter inch. 
but my thickness planner can only take 13 inches. So I recut the glue up on a glue line. Then it can go through the thickness planner. Now that all the pieces have the same thickness, I re-glue them together. When the glue is dry, I sand everything flush. Now I can cut the raised panel to the right width and length. Next, I clamp a plywood strip 8 degrees from the blade and cut a cove on both sides of each panel. This took a while, but now each one of them is half an inch thick on the small end. The saw marks are sanded with a piece of a pool noodle attached to a linear sander. The interior of the raised panel opening receives a chamfer. Then I cut a half inch slot for the raised panel. To do so, I use my big router with this slot cutting bit, and I clean the round corners with end tools. It's now the ideal time to sand the interior of the door, because this would have been nearly impossible when everything would be assembled. I prepare a batch of slow cure epoxy for the glue up. I start with the bottom of the door. I spread glue inside the mortises and on the dominoes. Install the panels and glue the styles. With 40 dominoes per door, sometimes some joints need a little persuasion. The last thing to do is to put three clamps, one in front of each rail. When the glue is dry, I sand the excess flush. Then, with a nice straight surface, I chamfer the window's opening. After turning the door around, I realized I forgot to chamfer the interior of the raised panel opening. Unfortunately, my router bit can't work with the raised panel in place. So, I use a router with a 1 inch collet and a sign marking bit. This is the only 45 degree bit I own. To chamfer this, I must make a frame an inch bigger than the raised panel opening. So I drill pocket holes on strips of plywood to make a frame. Lay them half an inch wider than the opening, screw them together, clamp them to the door and make the profile. In the end, I have a chamfer around the opening. Now I can make a half inch rabbit for the glass. The rabbit is just half an inch deep, but I need an inch and a quarter, so I use a copying bit. 
The first cut is done by back routing a shallow rabbit around the window opening. This creates a small rabbit, so the wood fibers are less likely to break during the final pass. As you can see, this is a nice rabbit, unlike the first one I did without the back routing. The glass openings need to have their round corners removed. The last thing to do on the door is to give it a final sanding. I also do the glass moldings, but I won't cut them to size yet. I'll wait until the doors will be hung in place. Editing is like magic. It makes it seem like a weekend project. But actually, I started them at the beginning of April when René was still moving the firewood. I stopped working on them when the actual work began. Then I continued working on them when the weather forbade me to work outside. I just finished them recently. Now both of them are waiting to be installed in my daughter's old bedroom. If you ask me, I think it's the nicest room of the house because it has a direct view on my shop. Here they are. The only missing parts are the glass. Yes, the ones I picked up from the neighbor. I really like how the raised panels ended, and they're really easy to make. Those are my shop front doors. One day, I'll install them, and you'll probably see this in a future episode of The Woodpecker. Woodpecker.